part two of why Christians struggle with sin, the complete misunderstanding of repentance. I remember when I used to believe repentance was the bad feeling that I have whenever I'm trying to turn from sin, I'm asking for forgiveness, and I'm trying to get back into God's good graces in that entire process. That's not what repentance is. Second Timothy chapter two says that opponents must be gently corrected, that God would grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, that they would come to their senses, escape the snare of the devil, and they have been taken captive by him to do his will. So you see that repentance is being led to a knowledge of the truth in that you come to your senses or your right mind. You've changed your mind in that you've escaped the devil's snare because that lie is what held you captive to do his will. And many Christians are attempting to externally change while still internally believing the devil's lies. It's a contradiction. A lot of people say that us believers are always saying that Jesus is coming back. And a lot of people before us have said this before. And it's taking so-called way too long. And it's because he doesn't want you to perish. Peter chapter 3 verse 9, it says that the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all could reach repentance. So God doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to have everlasting life. Did you know that hell was actually designed for Satan and his minions? Hell is not destined for us, but if we are going to follow the ways of the devil, then we are going where he's going. It's our own free will. Okay, I'm not sure who needs to hear this, but sis, stop scrolling, stop seeking, stop searching, and stop stalking. Stop trying to create your own love story. Don't you want a love story that you can look back and be like, man, only God did that and I waited well. So stop trying to manipulate things, make things happen, force things, going out and searching for it. Take a step back, go live your life, be confident in who you are and trust God with your love story. He knows you want it and he's gonna give it to you when he thinks it's the perfect time because he knows you better and your story better than you do. I know this is hard to do, but oftentimes when we put the story into our own hands, it doesn't go as planned. If I choose to or choose not to carry a baby, what does that have to do? Where where do you... F Listen, guys, obviously I am Christian. You know where I stand with this. I am pro-life. I'm not here to argue about that. I'm not. But I want to address something from that video. She calls it carrying or not carrying the baby. And let's face it, that is a very sugar-coated way of saying murdering the baby. Our society has done a really great job in making abortion sound like less than what it is by calling it women's rights and injecting it into the women's empowerment movement. I am not talking about pregnancies that are going to kill or harm the mother, and I'm not talking about those extreme cases but the narrative on abortion needs to change it needs to be treated like what it is it is something serious it's not something that should be normalized and when you start calling it women's rights that's when you start getting tiktok videos of young girls bragging about getting abortions because they think they're empowering themselves or people treating it like another form of birth control again i am not here to argue with you about it and i'm not here to judge you for it even if you've had it done but I need you to call abortion what it is. And I need you to treat it with that amount of seriousness. This is not something that can be normalized. So in the Bible, you have a lot of stories of Jesus healing people. But what's interesting that doesn't really get pointed out a lot is that these people had to wait a long time in their lives before God healed them. I mean, it wasn't like someone was paralyzed one day and then they woke up the next day and Jesus healed them. They had been paralyzed for years. They had been mute for years or demon possessed for years. And so it just goes to show that when you're praying for God to come through in your life and for God to do something for you, a lot of times it takes patience. And many times it's easy to get impatient with God because we want God to act now. We want God to answer our prayer now. But it says that if you wait upon the Lord, he will renew your strength. And it also says that the bad things that happen in our lives, God uses to develop uh, character and to develop patience. So just keep being patient and waiting on God and trusting in him. And he will do what his will is. But he wants you to surrender to him and rely on him for strength and not find it within anything else. This right here, this, this hurts. 
I love Dylan Little Brian. I love Teen Wolf, Maze Runner. All like he's an amazing actor. But in what world is is this okay? You can't tell me that if it was any other like religious book, if it was if he said this about the Torah or the Quran, tell me he wouldn't be canceled like immediately. But since it's Christianity, since it's you know Christians, oh, it's it's totally okay to make fun of Christians and mock their religion. It's totally okay. Now, I'm not saying he should have said this about other religions because that is disrespectful, but it, there's always a double standard with Christianity. Christianity is always getting mocked. Like, but I'm, I'm really not surprised that the world is like this because the Bible says in John 15 verse 18, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me before it hated you. And as Christians, we should just be praying for celebrities like this, praying for our family and friends who may be like this. Because in the Bible, Paul literally started out persecuting Christians, but later on he became a Christian and ended up contributing to so much to the New Testament. Like a person could go on a stage and say this and get applauded and people would love it. But if somebody goes on stage and says, Jesus loves you, Jesus died for your sins, Jesus wants a relationship with you, they would get done. They would get booed off stage. Like this world is so backwards. I can't. Here's a 30 second devotional. If you haven't spent time with Jesus yet today, couldn't hurt. This one comes from John 13, 4 to 5, which says, Jesus got up from the supper and took off his coat. He picked up a cloth and put it around him. Then he put water in a wash pan and began to wash the feet of his followers. He dried their feet with the cloth he had put around himself. Then this devotional says, can you picture this scene? As Jesus and his disciples finished eating, he got up and wrapped a towel around his waist, poured water into a basin and began washing their feet. Several jaws probably dropped on the floor as the disciples tried to comprehend what he was doing. Their feet, most likely dusty from walking on dirt roads, were being washed by the master. Jesus was giving us an example. Just as he served the disciples in washing their feet, we should serve others. He humbled himself and commanded that his disciples do the same. In verse 16, Jesus tells them, A workman who is owned by someone is not greater than his owner. One who is sent is not greater than the one who sent him. This was a profound lesson in servant leadership. Who can you serve today? While you may not know someone who could use a good foot bath, there are many other ways to serve. Is there someone who needs a meal? Do you know of a shut-in who needs a ride to a doctor's appointment? Is there a coworker who is really swamped and could use a hand? Offer to help out serving them in the name of Jesus. Hope you have the best day.